Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. So folks, today is the day we take a look at the 2022 Toyota Tundra once more. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Tundra from an ownership perspective, from a driving perspective, from all the features and everything that got updated. I have already done a full and thorough technical review of the Tundra where we lifted it up, looked at everything that was new, and I told you in that video we we're going to follow it up with a living with the Tundra review. So here it is. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. If you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. Without further ado, let's go check out the 2022 Toyota Tundra. Let's start with the exterior review of the Toyota Tundra. The first thing is with the Tundra, this has been something going on since 2007. The first generation missed that actually. Huge and enormous is the name of the game when it comes to the Tundra. So starting with the front, we have again a massive grill on this limited trim TRD off-road package. One thing I will say, usually cars that have an oversized grille just looks off, doesn't look right. But in the Tundra, it has always looked right. Of course, it says the word Tundra in the plastic down there. It says TRD here. Because another theme with this Tundra is the badging and the naming. There is the word Tundra spelled out everywhere. You cannot possibly mistake this for anything else. And if you did, the Tundra wording will remind you there's Tundra in the front, there's Tundra on the doors, there's Tundra on the bed. It's everywhere. You can never mistake this for anything else. Another thing about the exterior is the headlights. I truly like the headlight design. I think the previous one had just the headlight. Didn't have anything special. It just did its function and it was fine. But this actually has a very sleek and cool design. And if you really look close in the headlights, at least in this limited trim, you will see that it has screws inside the headlight. Now, are they actual screws? They are not. They are just there for show. But that's the attention to these. These are the little things that make this a cool truck. You look at the details. The whole truck looks nice, but when you really look at the details, they are very cool. And things like this make all truck owners and Tundra owners happy. Moving over to the side of the Toyota Tundra, we have a design element that we've actually seen in the Corolla Cross. Something that's very interesting with this design. So actually the side is flat if you look at it from the front, but because the fender has this bulge up top and then pushed in then raised again, it actually gives it the impression that it's a wide, wider body than it is. It's a kind of a mind trick when you look at it from the side, it just looks wider. Even when you look at it from the side, like from the front profile, but if you really look close, it's actually not raised at all. Very clever design, and I hope Toyota uses this design in other cars, because it's very interesting. But equally interesting, this design kind of carries over into the hood, and it has this big bulge in the middle of the hood, and then it has a dip. That actually gives it like a muscular look, especially in the driver's seat. It's pretty cool to see it. When you're driving, you see you have these big bulges, kind of like the truck is doing this. It is a very smart design. And then moving over a little bit further back, of course, we have the Tundra badge on both sides because you can never forget this is a Tundra. The mirrors, they're massive and rightfully so because this is a massive truck. I like the mirrors. There is one thing about the mirrors I don't like. They're too far sticking out. That is very good for towing, but actually makes them kind of that hanging effect. They kind of shake. That's the only thing I did not like about, that's kind of a side effect of having a giant mirror. It is power folding on this limited trim, which is cool. Every time you lock it, they fold and go away and they're tucked away and safe. Moving over to the back of the Tundra, we have the iconic massive door. Folks, this is an enormous door. This is a door that makes luxury limousines look tiny in comparison. And this is something that's been a hallmark of the Tundra since 2007 with the crew cab configuration. This is a huge door, folks. I mean, you have to, if you've never been near a Tundra, standing next to this door, you will realize how massive it is. But something interesting about the design of this door, it's not just a massive door. The belt line kind of comes up, and this is something you're actually gonna see when you turn around the driver's seat and look in your blind spot. 
Something I wish they wouldn't have done because it slightly intrudes in your blind spot, but it is a design element that unfortunately affects functionality, but it does look nice. It just makes it look different, not just a box around for the, for the windows and that's it. And in the back here, we have that same double bulge and a push in. It just gives it, again, that wider stance, but it's actually not wide. This is almost flat panel, folks, but when you look at it from far away, it actually looks like it's wider than it is. This is another optical illusion, very smart design. I like it because this doesn't actually make the truck wider and harder to, it's, this is already big as it is. If you make it wider, it's going to be even worse, but this gives you that impression without affecting the functionality. Coming around to the back of the Tundra, we have a few things going on here. First, I told you about the theme with the wording. You have Tundra, really large, and this, this time it's imprinted into the bed. Pretty cool design here. This is something that I've done since the previous generation. I love it. It looks really nice. And it's kind of a throwback because they used to put it to the side. Now it's like all the way in the middle. Kind of a throwback to old school pickup trucks. Overseas, we didn't get a lot of them in the U.S., but they used to say Toyota in very large lettering here. But this one says Tundra. And it actually says Toyota over here, very small. But that's all really it says. It says 4x4. That's all it says in the back. doesn't have any other lettering or distinguishing features. Something else about the bed design, the bed door itself, it has the same pushed in, raised, and raised design. It, it, again, this is very flat, but it gives it that bulging look. Flat with the taillight, very cool design. I really like this. I wish to see it in more and more models. But something pretty cool about the bed, right here on the taillight, you have a button. You press it, and the bed opens. It is not potentially the most important features. Yes, you could also do this and open the bed. But do you see what I just did? Every time you open the bed, you have to open it and kind of run back so it wouldn't hit you. But when you have this button, you could be standing on the side. Just hit it, bed is wide open. This is really cool. It's a good idea. It's only available on the driver's side. Makes sense. The driver comes out, pushes the button, it opens. This is a good idea. And this is how they add actual usable features, not features that nobody will use and after you buy it after a week, you forget about it because they're really not helpful features. This is something you will use a lot and it's a good idea. In, in addition to the emblems being a thing with the Tundra, that there's a lot of them around, all around that says the word Tundra, the camera theme also is one that is to be noted especially in this limited trim. So there is two cameras on the third brake light. There is one on the bed itself. There's two on the mirrors and one in the front. That's a little bit more than your average car. Even with the 360 cameras, they have four. This one has six for good measure. Let's talk about these because they're actually not just, even though this might sound why is there so many cameras, but they're actually functional. 360 cameras, that's four cameras, two in the mirror, one in the front one on the bed. That also serves as a backup camera. But the two cameras up there, one of them is the bed camera. This is something really cool. As you're driving, you can hit the view button if you're not stationary or stop. It's actually going to show you what's in your bed. If you have stuff here, and you're driving on the highway, you're worried, are my stuff flying around? Is anything loose? Anything that I need to know about? Instead of stopping and looking, you just hit the camera, have your passenger take a peek. Everything is good and you keep going. The other camera is actually the rear view mirror camera. This is something that we've seen debut in the RAV4. You flip the little switch on the camera and it turns into a camera in the rear view mirror. So you wouldn't have to see all the obstructions of the body. It's a cool feature. I personally don't like it. It kind of makes me dizzy, but that's just me. Some people really like it and it could be useful. But something very impressive about the bed of the Tundra that is super functional. And I love changes that are functional, not just to be cool. The lighting here, you have two LED lights on the side of the bed and the two lights over there. They are truly good, folks. And there's actually a, another light that is right here on the handle that when the bed door is closed, it lights this whole area. This is really functional and at night, it is truly good. It lights up this entire bed very good. There are LED lights. This works, this is a good feature. I wish every single truck has it. Another thing that is cool is on the side of the bed, you have a power outlet. If you're a construction worker, you a contractor, you do some kind of use some tools, you have a power outlet right there. That is very useful and cool to have. 
And another cool feature that we have for the Tundra is a step. I mean, this was something super missing before. Now you have a step. You don't have to really climb into the bed. This is really cool to see. This is the manual one. There's a power version. The manual one actually works really good and it just does its purpose. I like that. This is again, features that add a lot of functionality. Very important stuff here. Let's talk about the interior of the 2022 Toyota Tundra. Now, the first impression when you get in one of these, and it is even more when you get in the lower trims and even in the limited trim, there is not really the highest quality materials. And the first impression when you start kind of looking around, it just, there is not a lot of fancy stuff. You have to get into the capstone to really see high quality materials, even the 1794. But in the limited, in the lower trims, they're kind of just doesn't feel very high quality. But you know what? When you start spending time with this truck, because that's the first impression, and first impressions are important. But with the Toyota Tundra, you're going to want to spend a little bit more time past that first impression of, oh, wow, this, there's not a lot of soft touch stuff. Because the layout is so functional. Folks, this is not a Rolls Royce of trucks. This is a truck that you will use every single day, and it's very functional. It's very important that it stays that way. So I feel like they spent more time on functionality over materials and all this. If you want the materials, you're welcome to go in the capstone edition, but then you're going to pay for them. The first thing that will catch your attention here is the center console area. Like right here, right by the shifter, you have a wireless charger that stands up which I really like because then you can put your phone and it's right in your eyesight. It's not hidden somewhere. No, it's right there. You can just easily pick it up. The phone stays. It doesn't slide around. It has a little protrusion that helps it stay. That is really nice. But the one thing I, I remember the first time I saw this Tundra in person, I felt like this was just an open space. It was like almost, it's like missing a cover. But once I've lived with it for a week, I'm glad there is no cover because it would have been useless. This area is so functional. You have your phone here. You can immediately throw something here. You know, I'm in the process of building a shop for my channel. I always had a measuring tape here. This was really nice. And it's like almost designed to fit construction style tools that you're regularly going to use. This is really useful. This is a great idea, actually. I take back my statement of this needing a cover. And then when we look at the gauges in this limited trim, it's a simple gauge, has a screen in the middle, mechanical gauges, you have, the, you have the engine oil temperature and you have the charge voltage. Nothing really fancy or most of the trucks, other trucks from other makes, they have four, six, seven, eight gauges, show you all this stuff. Most people don't look at them anyways, so it was kind of a waste. But in the Tundra, if you go in the upper trim, especially when you get into the TRD Pro, you have a full screen that looks very fancy and all that good stuff. I honestly am against those because unless you get into really high-end cars that really utilize them to, for customization, you can put the map, you can do all this stuff, they really don't do much. They're just a gimmick that most people will love the day one and then after that, it's just it's the same thing. You have a screen that shows you how the mechanical gauges look like, or you can customize a few things, but it's nothing really past that. So if you have a screen showing you a mechanical gauge, why can't you just have a mechanical gauge? After all, you buy this truck for its function, not because it's cool. And these gauges does do that job just well. It's very similar to the previous generation that worked and it works just as well here. So there is that. And the center console lid, just like the previous generation, it is humongous. It is massive and there's so much storage here, so much space, something you expect from a truck like this. But something that is added here that I think is brilliant. Again, functionality is very important here. So if you have a passenger and they're leaning their, their arm here and you're leaning your arm here and you want to access something here real quick. In the past, you had to tell your passenger to shoe off, take this, close it. But now you have a little door right here and now you can access the front portion of it if you really stretch your arm you can access the back but that's not the idea you want to grab something real quick sunglasses whatever the case may be you can open this instead of shooing off your passenger to open the whole thing this is really cool and i really like this and the infotainment screen is potentially the biggest highlight of the tundra now in the lemon trim you have this massive screen which actually does look pretty cool and it really works especially when you put that map huge it really helps but 
even the lower trims that have a smaller screen it's the operating system that is a huge improvement over anything Toyota offered in the past. Folks, Toyota is behind on the radios and we're finally starting to see the new systems and they are epic. Finally, we have a radio that it doesn't freeze up every few seconds. It is responsive. Yes, you're gonna still have some problems with them. This is basically a computer in the car. You're gonna have constant software updates to fix bugs and issues and whatnot, but when it works fine, it works very well. It is responsive, it is not slow and buggy. It does have some customizations. And something that's really nice, we have wireless Apple CarPlay. Finally, the manufacturers are starting to catch up with this. Connecting with a wire, yeah, it works, but that's one more thing you gotta add. But something that is interesting, I feel like this truck was initially designed not to have wireless CarPlay and it got added later because we have a very lonely and strangely placed USB port right there. It could have been hidden somewhere else because you have the wireless charger right here. You have wireless Apple CarPlay. You're just going to, it's going to automatically connect. You're going to put it there and there's that. So why do we have this USB port? Maybe for the passenger? I don't know. Could have been in center console and life's good. But usually, when auto manufacturers upgrade the radios and they go all big screen and really cool, they kind of overdo it. They didn't overdo it in this, which I really appreciate. You still have all your climate controls, and I mean, all your climate controls are physical buttons heated seats, cooled seats, volume knob, everything is here. The only thing that is missing is your radio tune or skip a track which we can live with if that's the only thing we lost yet you have to operate in the screen. But all your other functions, they're all still here and that is a welcome thing. Something else that did not change in the Tundra, the seat comfort. Folks, the previous Tundra had some of the most comfortable seats you will ever sit in in a lot of Toyota lineup. And this is exactly the same here. These seats are super comfortable. They don't have bulging bolsters because this is not a sports car. This is a car that will roll all over the place because it is a big truck. So the seats reflect that. They're very comfortable. They do have a slightly larger bolster, but it's nowhere near intruding into your body. It's super comfortable to sit here. And then we move into the back seat area, which folks in the crew cab configuration of the Tundra, this rivals high-end luxury limousines. I mean, look at this space. Granted, I am a short person. I do push my seat a little bit back more than usual, but this is massive. This is extremely comfortable. Family, kids, tall adults, tall construction workers, they fit perfectly fine. But there's one thing else that is in the back that is really helpful. You can pull the seat back up and now you have storage and this storage actually runs the whole length of the seat this is really cool this is the, the areas where you hide things that are expensive you don't want them laying around in the interior you hide them here they're out of the way they're safe and sound and you have your seats not compromising your space this is really cool and something else about the back here in the limited trim trd package crew cab edition you have another power outlet here if you want to charge something you have two another two power outlets one of them is usb one of them is usb c something we're finally starting to see in some toyota models toyota seems to be a little bit late to the uh, usb c game but we're starting to see it and that's very welcome and something that is the biggest highlight at least to me in the infotainment system is the camera folks finally we have a camera that actually has good quality. You know, usually we have these big screens and I remember the Prius Prime had this. You had a massive screen and you put it in reverse, it's half the screen. This is the full screen and it's very high quality. This is how things should be. Really like this, but the coolest thing is you have multiple angles here. You can change it. And the coolest one is the bed camera. This is super cool, folks. As you're driving, once you take off like past five, 10 miles an hour, if you hit the view button, which is right here, right in front of you, you can actually look inside the bed as you're driving. If you want to see if your stuff in the bag flying around, loose, rolling around, you can just see it without stopping. This is really cool. And one thing that is also cool, you have this line that actually shows you where your trailer hitch is. This is really helpful. If you hook it up to the trailer, you don't have to, uh, 
kind of get off, keep looking and look around. This kind of gives you a guide or a general location. Another thing is you have the off-road camera. This gives you multiple angles, gives you your approach and everything. This is really cool. It's just one touch of a button and now you're set up for off-roading. Pretty cool. And lastly, on the interior of the Toyota Tundra, if you look at the door panel, so everything else is normal, but here you have almost like a tear on top of the door panel. This is so nice because when you're driving this car, you're actually going to rest your arm here. Usually this area is like curved down and you're like standing your arm on it and trying to get off of it because it's like a curved edge. But this is a flat edge. It's, it's literally meant for you to sit and put your arm here and be super comfortable. I really like this. Initially, it looked kind of looks odd that there's like a tear on top of it, but this is really a good idea and it's super comfortable when you actually live with the truck for a while. Let's drive the Toyota Tundra. And the minute you get in this truck, if you've owned one before or you're kind of familiar with them, the first thing you're gonna wonder is the V8 missed? And the short answer is, no. Let's find out why. This thing is pretty quick. And if you're listening to that noise, it does sound like a V8. And that's because they pump sound through the speakers to make it sound like a V8. Something that I wish they would have had a button for it to turn it on and off as needed. But they don't. Talk about more about that in a bit. Something else is the transmission. Folks, when this had a 10-speed transmission, I was concerned because when we went from 6-speed to 8-speed and other models, they were hunting for gears, they felt weird, but this transmission is beautiful. For lack of a better word, it's beautiful. It's seamless, super smooth, doesn't hunt for gears. Occasionally, you'll get a short shift where it'll go from one gear to the next very quickly, but that's really about it. It doesn't hunt for gears, and I love that. Now you have finally a transmission with a lot of gears, and it's not hunting, and it's not all over the place. And something else about the Tundra that I love, the ride quality, folks. So the previous Tundra was overall okay, but occasionally it was too bumpy. Those ancient leaf springs in the back, especially when you go over like a railroad tracks or whatnot, like consistent big bumps. The back end kind of jumps all over the place and it just, you can tell it's a truck truck, not a comfortable truck. But this, with rear coil springs, makes a huge difference in that. It's still slightly bumpy. After all, this is a truck, there's no weight in the bed. That is normal in this segment of, of trucks, but it is a lot better. I mean, a lot better than the previous. You can definitely tell that this has rear coil springs, sophisticated suspension. Again, we go back to that sophisticated thing. It has sophisticated suspension, and I really appreciate that and like it. Now, one more thing about the driving experience is the noise levels. Folks, this is not loud, and this is a surprise. You expect a truck like this to be loud. It doesn't matter. It's a big truck. Usually people will put big mud tires, and it'll be a lot louder. But in stock form, it's actually not that loud. It's not Lexus quiet, but it's not very loud. It's actually nice and normal and you can carry a conversation here at normal voice even at highway speeds. It's pretty nice. I really like that. The, the, the drive is very refined. It's not at highway speeds, kind of higher speeds. It's not all over the road and it handles like a truck. It's composed. Of course, no sports cars on rails, but for a truck this size and this high, it's actually confidence inspiring. You could drive on the highway, you don't feel like you're labored or always freaking out just all over the road. No, it's very, very comfortable, very quiet. The one thing I dislike about it is the start stop. Of course, that is not just me, that is everybody that basically has a car with auto start stop. It is annoying and it can be much. And with this truck, you know, you stop, auto start stop kicks in and shakes the whole truck and when you start it to get going it kind of creates a delay in a jerk when you take off but with emissions and everything this is something we have to put up with and it is what it is but overall very impressive to drive they really did a good job on that suspension refining this truck
Let's talk about some hidden features that you might have not known about if you've already bought one or you're in the process of getting one. The first thing is, in some models with the upper trim radio like the GBL, like this limited behind me, you have a fake V8 sound. Just know that that sound can be turned off by the dealership. Unfortunately, you cannot turn it off yourself. You have to go to a the dealership, they'll hook up their scan tool and take it off completely if you don't like it. You just want a quiet ride with no fake V8 sound. And here's how this truck sounds with the V8 sound and then without the V8 sound. The other thing is, if you're driving and you just want to mute the radio immediately, you don't have to actually roll the volume all the way down. If you press and hold the mode button, it actually mutes the radio. That is actually not marked, and that's something that's been going on with a lot of Toyota models that used to be marked where it says hold for mute. It doesn't say that, so it's the same deal with the Tundra. Press and hold the mode to mute it. Another thing is the lane keep assist. If you press the button on the steering wheel, it'll actually switch between active, LTA, and regular lane keep warning. If you want to turn it off completely, again, press and hold that button until it shuts off and now it's off completely in case you don't want to use it and you want to shut it off. Now, it is not all rainbows and butterflies when it comes to the 2022 Toyota Tundra. Just like anything else, this truck has good stuff and it has bad stuff. Let's talk about some of those bad stuff. So when the Tundra launched, so many people that initially got hold of the first ones, they had quality issues. And initially I thought maybe they were, they, they was the bad example. Maybe they got the very first one that had some issues, but unfortunately, this truck is actually a little bit down the road in the production here. And I personally have witnessed fit and finish issues. Things like hanging seals, peeling covers, little things like that. See, majority of these things, they're really not catastrophic things. They're little things that, they're annoying. They're, they will bother you, but they're not structural. They're not safety. Otherwise, they would have been safety recall or something. But it makes every new owner that just shelled out a small fortune for these trucks, these trucks are not cheap, just wonder if this is the stuff that I can see that are like this, what about the stuff I can't see that costs 10 times more than what I'm seeing? The Tundra does have an issue with the fit and finish. And folks, let's be honest here, most cars when they launch the first six months, eight months, some manufacturers, the whole entire generation of that model, they will have some issues, that's normal. And especially in the times that we live in, that's just the way things are going. But with something like the Tundra, with the hype that the Tundra have and the following and how much people love this truck, they were a little disappointing. And equally, I was. They could have done a little bit better on the fit and finish here. And then this next one is for those of us who are on the shorter side of things. I am 5'8", I am short. And this is, might be my problem alone or my fellow short folks. Getting into the Tundra has always been difficult for me because it's a large truck and it's high off the ground. It's gonna be hard to get into it. But my problem is not really with the truck itself. My problem is with this the tube, the rock slider accessory. I mean, what exact purpose does this serve? Cause I'm sorry, when I open the door, it is nowhere near me stepping on it to get into the truck. Neither is the Tundra really built for extreme rock off-roading because it's a giant behemoth that is very heavy, not exactly the type for rock climbing. So what exact purpose does this serve? I don't know. The only good thing is this is an accessory and a useless one. And now we speak about the elephant in the room. Folks, this is the new 3.4 or 3.5 liter twin turbo engine. And there has been reports of turbo problems. Let's put this one into up for discussion because a lot of you have asked me about this and I will share to you my honest opinion. I don't sugarcoat things. I say things exactly how I think them. I think the turbo problem had gotten blown out of perspective. And here's why. 
Everybody says Toyota ruined the Tundra by putting this twin turbo V6 and now the turbos are having issues and everything went down and the quality is down and we'll never buy a Tundra and I'll keep my old V8 and I'll never sell it and it'll outlive me and all this jazz. Well, here's, here's the reality of things. If we go back to 2007, and specifically just before 2007, when the 2007 Tundra came out, guess what the V8 did that was debuting in that time, the massive 5.7 liter V8? It started dropping valves. Guess what? These are new car problems. That is normal, folks. Many people don't realize it or they can't just accept it, but that is the truth. The first six months of production usually will have some kind of issues. That's why cars have warranties, because they will be taken care of by warranty with an updated part and life is good. And very few unlucky ones will actually get the same part because the manufacturer just wants them to get the car back on the road and then when it fails again, we will replace it with updated parts. The problem with the Tundra is a very few got the ones that had the issue with the turbo, which is a wastegate. The wastegate sticks, they will update it and life is good. It's not the first time they didn't invent the turbo. There's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of cars out there on the road with turbos that go a decent distance before there's any ever issues, Toyota included. Some folks got this issue and they decided to blow it out of proportion, going online, trying to get attention. And look, I understand, I am not blaming them. You bought a $60,000 truck and you got a problem within a few hundred miles, you're going to be very upset. I understand. But the reality is you're kind of generalizing here. My advice to you is if you're really worried about these little fit finish issues and the turbos, skip the first six months to eight months if you want to play it safe. That's normal, folks. And that's actually pretty good in the automotive industry. Some manufacturers, they will go an entire generation, three, four years of production before they actually fix their common problems. So Toyota fixing their stuff six to eight months, that's actually a pretty high record in the industry. It just takes that long until the first problem shows up and until they identify which cars were affected. I mean, that is a massive operation. And Toyota does it pretty quick. The supply chain issues and, and the pandemic and all that, it is making it a little bit longer. And yes, sometimes it feels like it's very long. I don't think this is really an issue because to clarify, Two turbos, it could be either one of them that has an issue. The driver's side, you have to pull the cab and that picture, somebody posted a picture. One of my brothers, a Toyota technician at a dealership, posted a picture of the bed, of the body off the truck, the cab off the truck, and that set this whole thing in motion. Folks, just to clarify, pulling a body off of a truck, a Tundra, Tacoma, is not a major operation. It seems like it is but it's actually not. This is how this car was put together. And they made it as easiest possible to make assembly easier. So just like the assembly was easy, the disassembly was also easy. Looks massive, but it's not. But that's for the driver's side. For the passenger side, you can actually remove it without pulling the body. It's very difficult, very tight, but it's doable. And it's not the end of the planet. Take care of these cars. One thing I will tell you, if you're worried about turbos past this initial issue with, with the brace gates, here's my advice to you. You gotta keep the maintenance on these turbo engines and do yourself a favor. And some people call me old school, antiquated, but guess what? It is not. If you've been driving very hard, like you've been accelerating hard and it's very hot outside and you stop your truck and immediately shut it off, that's actually not good. You're gonna want to wait a little bit just like the olden days, turbo timers and all that, it's the same thing at a lesser scale because these things are, they have some mechanisms that are built into them to prevent that, but it'll still happen. It won't happen as fast as the olden days, but if you want to keep this truck 200,000 miles, 300,000 miles, 15, 20 years, you're going to want to do that early on. Prevention is the key here. Don't challenge the turbos and then they fail 150, 200,000 miles and now you're upset. Start from now that the truck is new. Do that oil change every 5,000 miles instead of, all. Oh, we're not going to have this whole debate. Do the oil change every 5,000 miles. Don't shut off the truck right off when, you, when it's very hot and you'll be driving it hard. Preserve that turbo and it will last just like anything else. If you take care of it, it'll take care of you. 
So, what is the final verdict on the 2022 Toyota Tundra? Folks, this Tundra does one thing very, very well. It captures the soul of the previous generation because that generation was so loved and cherished and it was so good that people were nervous when they were uprooting the whole thing and changing it. But this does a really good job in capturing that spirit of the previous Tundra. But it adds a very nice and functional modern touch to it. And people are out crying about the outgoing V8. We will miss the V8. You know what? I was one of those people initially, silently. I didn't like the V6 twin turbo, but driving this truck for a week, I did not miss the V8. This thing is powerful. It is quick. There's no turbo lag. It drives super well. I love it. I did not feel at any moment that, oh man, it was, it was a V8. No, it's, it's actually a little better. If anything, to me, it felt a little faster. And on the gas mileage. Now, I am not one to talk about gas mileage because I don't drive very gently. I have a lead foot and that's just how I drive every single car I drive. I was averaging, even with that, and driving actually a lot around the city here purposefully to see how it does, it was actually averaging 50 miles per gallon. Some people will jump out of their seat and say, all oh, this mess for 50, we're still getting 15? That's actually not bad because same driver, myself, driving the old V8 Tundra, I was lucky to get 10 miles a gallon. That's a 50% increase, in my driving at least. And the other thing is, if you drive it like a normal human being, you'll potentially see 20s even more in normal driving, you know, normal cargo, normal passengers. That is pretty good. Because if you're expecting this to ever get Prius kind gas mileage, it's just simply not going to happen. This is a giant behemoth that is basically a giant box that weighs a lot, has huge tires. It's just not going to happen. And that's, I think the gas mileage is really improved in this. And that was one of the biggest complaints about the previous one. If you're in the market to buy a truck, this is a serious contender. It's not perfect. Nothing is. But overall, it has more good than bad. Something about this truck that I truly like, if I would describe it, it would be this. It has a feeling of old schoolness to it. But at the same time, it has a lot of modern features and pretty good modern features, not modern features that are tagged on and clipped on. No, it was designed with them and it just feels right, doesn't feel out of place. It has a lot of little touches that really make this all about function, not about just show. It does have a lot of show because it's enormous and has a giant curl in the front, but it has more functionality focus than show. And that is really important because this is not a museum piece. This is a truck that will be working and you need those functionality features and that touch of modernness to keep yourself happy, comfortable and driving this thing, hopefully for a very long time. If you are concerned about the initial quality issues here and there, wait for six to eight months and I think you will not have an issue buying this. Toyota is usually pretty good about solving their problems and moving forward without issues. So let's hope they keep up to that. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel and check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you and you have yourself a wonderful day.